Well, well, welcome everybody to Gaming Rock. I'm Cal, and today we're starting a brand new Let's Play of Empire of Sin. This is the beta update build 1.05. As of when I'm recording this, the 1.05 patch is still in beta, so I had to opt into it. If you go into the whole game, this is my first time playing it. I did wait a little bit. I know the game isn't completely new, but it hasn't seen its first expansion yet, and for Paradox, that's a pretty big deal. I just wanted to give the game some time to sit out, heat a little, get a little bit better, and I think now is a perfect time to jump into it. So let's go ahead and start off a new game. Daniel McKee Jackson here, at your service. All right, so first thing we need to jump into is deciding our mob boss. Who are we gonna be? I'm gonna go through them, because this is, I haven't seen any of these yet, so I honestly don't know. Looks like they all have a boss ability, an empire bonus, and a diplomatic bonus. And I don't know how many there are. I think there's actually quite a few. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through them. And whichever one just sticks out the most to me is the one I'm probably going to run. All right, so we have Daniel McKee Jackson. Looking pretty spiffy. He is, I guess that's where they're from. So he's American. He's part of the Vice Kings. I'm your man, Frank Reagan. Frank Reagan. Okay, he's Reagan's Colts. Let's see. He looks all right. He's got the all red suit. Why not? This city is mine. Let's go get it. Ooh, Mabel. Okay. She looks um pretty rough, honestly. I don't know who did her makeup, but she looks well, not sugar coated. She just looks awful. Probably not her. Sorry, Elvira Duarte. Elvira Duarte. Interesting. Boss ability. Devil's Breath. Blow a cloud of psych psychotropic smoke into your target's face. The target will temporarily become your ally, but at a cost. The effect will cause damage over time, eventually killing them. Whoa. Maybe I should just read all the boss abilities. That's a pretty cool one. Evira. Okay. Hey, good choice. Now we have Joseph. Saltus. Okay, let's see. Stampede. Show him who's boss. Charge forward, dealing a large amount of damage and knocking back the first enemy in your path. Any enemy caught in your path is damaged by the knockback. So that's pretty cool. He seems to be more of a bruiser type of guy. If I'm, that's, that's the vibe I'm getting from Joseph here. Good decision. Stephanie St. Clair. She has, whoa, the firing squad. Okay, she's part of the card sharks. Uh, I guess that's French. Yeah, that's French. So she's a French gang. That's interesting to see. Usually you think of these um, mobs and you just think Italian and Irish. But I guess the French might have. Don't get your hands dirty. Make your allies do it. At your command, any friendly or allied character that are within range of you will open fire at a selected target. Whoa. I might have to go with that one. Stephanie, all right, I'll keep you in mind. You can call me Al. Ah, here we are. Al Capone. Very nice. He's part of the outfit. Rainfire. I see, I would pick him, but um, I think the, the only Let's Play that I've seen has been of him, so I don't want to play something that I've already somewhat seen a little bit. But he does have Rain of Fire. I did see this ability in one of the previews when the game was coming out. Basically just shoot a bunch of bullets into the air and they come down. I'm Frankie Donovan. Who Frank Donovan. Oh, Okay, probably not the nicest guy, so he's definitely Irish. I didn't even have to look at the flags for that one. Frankie Donovan, unleash fury, unleash a flurry of devastating melee strikes against your enemy. Every kill renews your fury and restores your AP, but causes you to become exhausted. Wow, so he just beats the hell out of people with a stick. That is quite interesting. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Angelo Diana. Whoa. Now he... Looks like the type of guy <laughs> I do not want to get on the wrong side of. Fan of knives. Belay your foes with a barrage of throwing knives. Select multiple targets or a single target multiple times. Once selected, release a fury of knives at the target. That's pretty interesting. And he gets additional guards and less. I like this. Goldie Garneau, the one and only. Okay. We clearly got to go Goldie. <laughs> She's part of the fortune tellers. Now that's interesting. Killer Queen, bring your bring your enemies to their knees. Place your mark on your enemies. Once marked, fire a shot at each target. Each shot has improved critical chance and ignores defense. That doesn't seem as good as, let's just say, 
some of the other ones. I, I'll think about Goldie, honestly. Ha, good decision. Cywing Mock. Okay, he's Hip Sing Tong. That's just the name of his clan. He looks pissed, man. That is a great shirt, let me say. Death Blossoms. Introduce your enemies to the deadliest bloom. Select multiple locations and throw a bomb at each one. Each bomb explodes into a cloud of smoke, poisoning all nearby characters. Whoa. Wow, he kind of came out of nowhere. I might have to pick him. Hi there. It's Maggie Dyer at your service. Okay, Maggie Dyer. Uh, this is um, it's quite the character. Lion Tamer. Target an enemy target. Uh, Target an enemy character with your whip. I, who the heck uses whips anymore? Drawing them into a nearby tower, deliver a devastating punch once the target is in range, dealing damage and knocking them down. It's an interesting one. Of course, the brothel security calls it down to her. That makes sense. Got you covered. Doin? Is that Doin? Dian? Obian? Obanion? I, I, wow, I. I butchered that. That's sad because I, I have Irish in me. I should know what this is. The Northside Mob. Basically, blasphemy. Uh, blast the opposition. Shoot your target with an explosive shot sl slug, knocking them back and destroying their armor. It's a pretty good one, too. Not going to lie to you. Good choice. Salazar Reina. He is part of the Los Haijos de la Llorona. <laughs> I probably should have practiced the names of these things before I actually started doing it while recording myself. I, maybe I could just cut it. Nah, I won't do that. He has Santa Muerte. Deliver unto the Lady of Holy Death. Dual wield your revolvers and spin in a circle, firing shots into enemies all around you. Whoa. Sounds like a pretty cool one. Daniel McKee Jackson here. At your service. And we're back at Daniel McKee Jackson, the true American of the Vice King. Last right, surgically unload a full clip of your pistol into the target. If the target dies before the clip is empty, another target is automatically chosen. Each enemy killed by last right reduces its cooldown. So he's like a gunslinger. Well, he's interesting, but I gotta say, one seemed... Oh, I did not read Mabel's. Uh, take a trick shot, mark multiple targets, and fire one well-aimed shot that ricochets between them. Anyone caught in the village passes damage. Okay. La Reina de Chicago. I kind of want to go with her, if I'm being honest. I don't know what it is, but Devil's Breath, blow a cloud of psychotropic smoke into your target's face. So she gets people to fight for you. And it damages them over time. That is quite the interesting ability. I think I'm going to go with her. Elviria Duarte. Huh. Okay, let's go. So the Empire bonus, she has a brothel. Brothel security cost minus 20%. Casino, additional casino guards. That'll be nice. And her diplomatic bonus is the Peacemaker. Faction rating. When making non-aggression packs with other factions, you get plus 100. Well, I love that. So I guess we're going with, uh, well, let me just see this real quick. Is mine. Let's go get it. No. Yo soy Elvira Duarte. Elvira. Yep. Let's go with Elvira. 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 Whoa. Yep, we're going with her. Okay, so we have some. We have some options here. Neighborhoods ten. Enemy factions. We'll just keep it at ten instead of full. We could go down a little bit. You know what? We'll keep it at lieutenant. I, um. Let's go with underboss. Let's bump it up just one difficulty. Elvira. Elvira Duarte. Runs her gang like a family. It's brought them to Chicago for a better life. She speaks. That was too fast. Thank you for seeing me, Mama Elvira. I need your advice. Uh, let's see here. I heard about yours and Raul's good news. Delia, have you been keeping secrets? You've been keeping secrets from me, haven't you? I don't have much time to waste at my age. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have much time. I don't have much time to waste at my age, Delia. Let's get right to it. Raul and I are having a baby. We need to be able to support our family. What do you think that we should do? There's a racket in Chinatown. We will take it. He can run it, earning more money for the three of you. Okay. 
There's a racket. We will take it. He can run it, earning more for the three of you. Gotta say, just based off that one little cutscene, the voice acting is not the best. <laughs> that was... It felt choppy and just not... Okay. Elvira plans to build her new empire anew one step at a time. Soon they will be stronger here than they were in Mexico. Soon all of Chicago will belong to her and her family. Okay. So we're from Mexico. And here we are in the game world. Welcome to Empire of Sin tutorial. Now I could do the tutorial skip. Let's go ahead and just do the tutorial for the first. Skip this tutorial. Skip all tutorials. Now we'll, we'll do it. Welcome to Chicago. Let's have a look around. Just going through a few of the basics and we can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. Pretty standard stuff, except usually you can rotate. Whoa, accidentally right. Whoa, she is fast for her age. Look at her go. Look at that. She is quick. Uh, what I was about to say is usually if you click down on the middle mouse button and turn, it'll pan the camera like it does with Q and E. I wish they would add that feature. I, I love using my mouse. For as many things as I can. Okay, let's go ahead and move. Chicago to is a dangerous place, and in order to survive, you're gonna need to learn how to fight. Fortunately, I know right where you can find one. All right, so here we are. Let's go ahead and click Enter. Oh no, where do I right click? Okay, I right click and I click Enter. There we go. This joint belongs to Ronnie O'Neill. He calls himself the boss of the Meat Packers gang. His thugs aren't going to know what hit them. All right, so press control to ambush. Let's go ahead and control. In Empire of Sin, combat is turn-based. The queue of characters waiting to take their turn is above, and a turn order is decided by a character's initiative stat. If enemies are allied with a boss, that boss is also shown under their portrait. All right, sounds good. And I did say that this is my first time playing the game, but I have seen gameplay of it, so I'm not completely new to everything. This is also pretty standard for anybody who's played a game like XCOM or Wastelands 3. This is basically that. Okay, so it looks like we got two enemies, one over there. They're part of the Meat Packer gang. Let's see, can I go ahead and I want to do the cloud thing. You must kill three enemies to use this ability. Well, if I knew that, then I probably wouldn't have picked it. All right, let's see here. So there's a guard there. If I come over to here, let's take cover. Can I shoot at you? I can. From here? No, I actually don't have the range. That's pretty sad. So maybe I have to move. I'm going to move actually. The action bar is below. In combat, you can move or choose an action from the action bar. Some actions require a target. It's your turn. So fire a shot if you've got a target. Choose another action or move into cover. Okay, so I'm already in cover. I'm going to go ahead. I just it looks like I have double fire here. What? So this cost me 1 AP to do a single attack. I could also do double which will fire twice at the same one. If I do the single, well, I might as well just do the double then because I'm going to end up having to do two singles regardless. Let's go ahead and double fire on this first guy. Whoa. He hit the ground before that second shot. He even hit him. Generally, each action takes one AP. Extended moves, special weapons, and some abilities take two AP. Choose an action below to see how many AP it requires. Okay, so fairly straightforward. That was nothing really. Did I... It looks like it's my turn again. I only have two AP. Let's go ahead and move up a little. Get to full cover. And then, can I take a shot? I can take a shot. It's only 68%, but... We're going to take it. Elvira is going to take her shot. Right, so he's moving up. I don't know. Cover is vital to your survival. Cover is provided by the environment. Walls, cars, big objects, etc. Cover can be full cover, represented by a full shield. Or half cover, represented by a half shield. 
You can be flanked by the enemy and lose all of the cover benefits. So, be careful. Got it? Good. Get rid of these guys and the place is yours. All right, so Vera is going to go ahead and take him out as well. Let's go ahead and fire at him. Just give him a good shot. Very nice. Right in between the eyes. It was the only way. Okay, so victory. We took over the star spot in Chinatown. We gained plus two notoriety, uh, faction standing. Yeah, the meat packers don't like us that much. Minus 26, but we did get some money from them. No rewards, no combat results yet. Let's go ahead. Take when you the win. win a racket, you have several options. Let's take this place over and make it ours. Sounds good to me. Takeover is the way I'm going to go. This speakeasy. Taking a place over costs less than buying it outright. And it's free to keep the racket type the same. So pretty straightforward. If you take over a speakeasy to make it your speakeasy, it doesn't cost anything. But if I wanted to take over a speakeasy and make it something like a casino, this is how much money theoretically I would have to spend. But to, because this is a tutorial, we're just going to take the speakeasy. Do you want to take it? Yes, I do. Serendipity. No, I don't think that's what we want. I think we want... To call this the 5 0 clock. Yep, 5 o'clock. Now this racket's yours, and that's how it's done. You want something? Take it. You're gonna need some guards to keep your speakeasy safe, so open up the racket screen. Alright, so we just took over the speakeasy. Let's go ahead and you got four put in some ways guards. You can class up the joint, starting with security. The information panel to the right shows your security's current state and what you'll get in the next upgrade. Select upgrade to go to the next level. This game is just so interesting to me and I've been wanting to play it for such a long time because on the surface it seems like a very basic game but then you get into these menus and there's just so much going on throughout this whole game. And eventually, I mean this is only one place and we have all this information for it. That's crazy to think about. The fact that we're going to have multiple locations and multiple different maps of multiple different types. So it's just very cool how deep this game goes into things. But for now, they want me to go ahead and upgrade my security. And if we look over here, we can see... How do I just... Is there a way I can... I'm trying to see if I can scroll this up and down. It doesn't look like I can. Okay, so right now it's one upkeep. We have plus 25 security. Uh, total number of guards, three. So we're going to be upgrading. We're going to get about two more guards with the upgrade. Do I want to do this? Yes, Since I do. You got a stage. Get yourself a band. Upgrading ambience improves your draw. Higher draw means more customers and more money. Select upgrade to add a band. Alrighty, a band sounds good for me. Let's see. What am I going from basic ambiance? We're going to get slightly better ambiance and adds a basic band. And I think actually the upgrades show in the place in the real world, which is pretty awesome. Normally upgrades take time to complete, but seeing as you're just starting out, we've automatically completed these upgrades for you. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Looks great. Now, let's get out of here. You got other work to do. And there is our band, and it looks like they're actually members of our gang. Pretty nice. So we got our own band and everything. We got the bartender, our guards working around. We can see who our guards are. Well, I guess they don't have a name. That's fine. We'll go ahead and uh, go on out there. I cannot get over how fast this lady is. Look at this. That is crazy fast. I, I can't remember if when I was checking this game out if they were that fast or if they updated it. I did opt into the beta and one of the beta notes did say increase movement speed. So that's pretty good. I can imagine how that would get annoying. Attracted some of the local criminal talent, and they're looking for work. As your empire grows, you'll gain access to bigger and better hired guns too. All right, so we got some new people coming in that want to join us. These are kind of like our personal bodyguards. We have Bao Cheng Ung, Bao Zheng Ung. I I I'm almost positive that's not how you pronounce it at all. How do I? Would I go to higher? Go ahead and click higher. Yeah, let's do higher. Uh, upfront zero, monthly take 10%. That's, that's pretty steep for one person, taking 10% of a whole organization's <laughs> a whole organization's income. But who wants me to do that? So that's fine with me. We're probably going to change her. 
All right, sounds Gangsters straightforward. range from professional hitmen to shockingly wayward criminals. They have opinions about the people they work with, and their personalities and traits develop over time. Got You'll it. You'll find gangsters looking for work out in the world and in the black book. We'll take a look at that later. As you become more powerful, you'll gain access to more hardened, skilled gangsters. Now, hire your second crew member. All right, that sounds pretty good. So just going over Bao right here, oh, Bao. I am gonna, I'm gonna have to change your name if I'm being honest. I cannot pronounce that. And right here we have Hugh Miller. Let's go ahead and hire Hugh Miller up right now. I got your back. I got your back. I like that. All right, so to create a squad, hold and dry. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Now you got yourself a squad, just in time to. Your new speakeasy isn't gonna last long without alcohol. It's the resource that makes your world go round. Just so happens Ronnie O'Neill's got a brewery close by. Let's take it over. Zoom out to the world map to see where it is. All right, let's zoom on out. And there we go, right down the street. I don't know why it has you in this part of the game zooming all the way out to go right up the street, but you do. And even from here, we can zoom out more and more and more. And we are in Chinatown currently. So let's go back on down to Chinatown. I'm really going to take a second to get used to not clicking that middle mouse button to rotate. But it wants us to go right up the street, so we'll zoom in a little bit. Sweet. For her ability, does that mean I have to kill three people every round before I can use that ability? That's terrible if that's the case. Hmm. Oh, control. Yeah, we want to ambush them. I almost forgot. Yeah, I have to kill... Oh, no, no, no. It says I have to kill one more enemy. So I guess it, it transfers between rounds. So I might want to save this, actually, for a sec. We'll see. Let's go ahead and double tap. And we'll double tap, obviously, the one with the 84. Nice. The meat packers were expecting you. Hopefully they've also expected their funerals. Let's take them out. Yeah, that's the plan, man. All right. Is she up again? I thought she just went. All right. Well, I'm not going to complain about doing it again, so. Uh, double miss. Very nice. Okay, we're on bow. I'm going to just call her bow. <laughs> like bow. We have burst fire. What type of gun does she have exactly? She has what looks like a... Looks like a rifle, actually. So we have burst fire, fire multiple rounds at a single target, incurs a small aim penalty, or sweep. Sweep a highlighted area with a volley of bullets. I want to see, what is that? Whoa. Well, that's going to come in handy. Let's go ahead and just for now go with our regular burst fire. Victory, there we go. And look at that. We actually got something. We got Dr. Cutter's Biters. Bitters? Bitters are known to settle the stomach and keep people moving. Temporarily increase your health by 50 and movement by 30 for two rounds. Okay. You're gonna need more than a few guns to take out Ronnie and his guards. Luckily, the black market's got everything you need. Oh! Open the black he just went by selecting the shop if I turn. at the top of the screen. Alright, so we're going to the black market. Now that you're in the shop window, it's time to get yourself some provisions. Check the stats and effects of any item in the shop in the right window pane. If you want a recommendation, you can't go wrong with a first aid kit. Leave first, the shop when you have what you need. First aid kit sounds great. So let's see what we got. We have weapons, $20,000 for a gold machine gun. We have, uh, looks like sidearms, so main, side, melee, but that's blocked out right now. Let's go on over. We have grenades, but it looks like it's more than just grenades. It looks like a plethora of options, like a health tonic, a first aid kit, a bandage, and yes, a grenade. Let's go ahead and grab, let's grab two first aid kits and maybe one bandage. What does the bandage do? Wrap up your wounds to stop bleeding or stem from other nasty effects. Restore 20 health each round or remove one negative status effect. 
All right, yeah, so I'm glad I got that. And then over here we have armor, which I wonder if I equip the armor, will it actually show on my character model? That would be pretty cool. Although, given the voice acting earlier, I don't know if they spent the time putting in the clothes, too. All right, so we got our health packs. Let's go ahead and exit out. Now, take over Ronnie's brewery. Now, let him know who's boss. First things first, before I do that, can I see inventory? Yes. Is there a quick button? Yes, the I button is to go there. So here's my main girl. Can I uh, exit out of you? Okay, so here's Elvira. What do we got? We have no main weapon for you. That's fine. We're good with just, even though you have the Tommy gun, you're fine with just the pistol for now. What did I get? I also got a health kit, which we already have in stored. Let's go ahead and equip. Let's do Dr. Cutter's Biters. That sounds good with me. Any melee weapons? Nope. Okay. Well, it wants us to go inside. We'll, we'll look at everything after we go inside. Let's go ahead and info. Can I info this place? Oh, I could see what the place already has. So it's a level two security. Okay. Let's go ahead and attack. Size small. Are you sure you want to attack the engine store? Yes, I am. Because the tutorial said so. Breweries are well guarded, and this is a tough fight. Understood. All right. So first up is Hugh Miller. Let's see what we could do with Mr. Hugh. Can I move here? I'll have a fifty percent shot, but I will have full cover. Hmm. Or I can move off to the side. Yeah, I'll I'll put Hugh right here and maybe because it's only a 50 percent really do i want to take the shotgun blast blast deals 70 percent of damage but it goes in the area yeah might as well just shotgun blast him double miss there you go Hugh. yeah that's my reaction too now if i went with you i could turn you actually do I want to do that? Okay. Yes. Let's go ahead and turn him against everybody. Very nice. So we got one of the meat packers on our side. And then I will actually throw down an overwatch. Yeah, let's throw down an overwatch. Oh, we'll watch this area. There we go. And we actually get to take control of him. It's not AI controlled, which is quite nice. And let's go ahead and... Well, no, let's move, actually, out into the open. That way he gets hit a little bit. We want them to focus fire on to their own guy. That'd be nice, because I could care less if he gets hit. Oh, and just like that, he's down. There we go. We got our Overwatch active, though, which is pretty nice. Oh, there you go. Nice dodge, Hugh. Okay, so back to Hugh again. Let's go ahead and... Let's put some firepower down. 75% chance. Whoa. That was, that was a nice shot right there. If I move... Can I, I... Do I only have one action point? What's going on here? Just move right there and then let's get a hit going out on him. There we go. Nice shot. Elvira with the nice shot. Let's throw down... Let's throw down another Overwatch, actually, out in his area. There we go. She is absolutely tearing it up. Took over the engine store, we gained 2 notoriety, and got some money from the meat packers, and also a first aid kit. Very nice. Take this racket over too. Breweries are critical to your empire. Each brewery can supply. It's free to set up a racket of the same type you took over. It'll cost you to re-outfit a racket as something else. Select brewery. Ooh, now we get our own brewery. What should we name our first brewery? Hmm. That's a good. Let's call it Blood Rum. Because that is exactly how we came through with this. What are you doing to me, Elf? Blood Rum Brewery. Those rackets are my livelihood. If you want them back so badly, why don't you come and get them? Alright, Elfira, alright. You want to settle this? Then let's talk. You know where I am. See you soon, Ronnie. 
Sit down. Ronnie O'Neill has summoned you for a sit down. Got it. Step outside the brewery. This all right, so we're gonna have our first sit down with our first mob boss. Let's hope this goes good. Uh, we'll go ahead and exit on out. with another boss, a serious business. They usually take place in a boss's racket, but they can take place in safe houses too. Zoom out to the world map to find Ronnie's safe house. All right, let's zoom on out and see where he's at. He's right down the street. Don't know why it has a zooming out when it could just say right up the street from you. You'll find Ronnie. Let's go ahead and go. First thing I want to check real quick is for you. Can I see? So I can't see what her ability is at right now. Like I want to check her cooldown and see if she has that ability, but it's not showing me at the moment because I do know that we're about to get in a fight here and it's going to be a hard fight and I would have loved to turn one of the boss's guys against him. Anyways, let's just go on into the safe house, have her sit down. Welcome to Chicago, Elvira. I should have thrown you a welcoming party. Maybe then we wouldn't have this trouble. Oh, that's not the way you talk to Elvira. I forgive you, Ronnie. Your rackets are gifting up. What trouble is that, Ronnie? You're the one making things difficult. I forgive you, Ronnie. Your rackets are gifting up. I forgive you, Ronnie. Your rackets are gifting up. Elvira, you're too old for this business. Ooh. Maybe you were confused when you took my rackets. Ooh. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt if you leave them. Now. Oh, that is not how you do it. Pull a gun. I'm not confused. This should make that clear. Whoa. Well, yeah, we're pulling a gun. I'm not confused. This should make that clear. Crystal clear. I think it's time you retire. Wait, what? Era. Adios, my dear. She didn't even pull a gun. What What was the point of putting pull a gun if she's not going to pull a gun? So, I mean, these cut scenes are pretty just, I don't know, cheap. But the rest of the game is extremely deep, and that's what I like. Sweet dreams, Ronnie. Let's see what Elvira can do. This is a boss battle in the literal sense. To win at this game, you need to be the last one finished. finished. Take Ronnie out, and his empire is all yours. All right, straightforward enough. So this is going to be a little bit harder of a battle here. We have 70, 80. If I move here, can I still fire? What can I shoot at right now? I have a 70% chance to hit you. You know what? I'm actually going to go ahead and, well, if I do the shotgun blast. Let's do shotgun blast. Oh, can I not? All right, that did not work. I don't know why it only hit one of them. So I am one kill away from my power. Let's go ahead and take him out first, and then she can actually go ahead and clean you up on the side. Let's go ahead and burst fire. Very nice. Okay, now the boss should be coming around. Here comes Donnie O'Neill. And he is, whoa, he's actually going to score quite the hit. Oh, we got one from the back, too. Okay, now let's see here. If I come up... Can I not fire yet? Shotgun blast, attack. Can I just go right there and I'll be able to shoot him? I'm not... Does he have line of sight there is my question. Maybe. Let's just go ahead and move first into some half cover. And we'll go ahead and we'll take this shot. Very... Oh! Right to the back. Okay, Elvira's turn, and I don't understand. It just said I need one more kill to get that. It doesn't make any sense to me. Well, let's go ahead and get this kill. I could have sworn it said you just need one more kill. And, of course, he's not dead. Let's go ahead and... We do have a 43% chance. Let's move you here, and we'll actually get an Overwatch set up. Who's next? You're next. So I would like... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to wait for the shotgun guy to go. I'll let him pass through. Oh, he actually triggered my overwatch. He's going to move and... Oh, please miss. Let's go ahead and... 
take you out for now. Very nice. Now, does she have... You need... She personally needs to get two kills with this. Which is kind of annoying. I don't know how much I like this power. I'm just going to go ahead and stick you on Overwatch, I guess. And I might as well move you up, too. And I will also stick you on Overwatch. Oof. Yeah, not a very fun time. Can he take a shot as well? Alright, let's move you up. We're going to stick everybody on Overwatch again. We're just going to Overwatch him to death, basically. Put you there. We will move... Where should I move you? Can I move you there and stick you on Overwatch? Move her back a little bit. Overwatch as well. Oh man, as soon as this guy turns the corner, he's just going to get fried. <laughs> and one more. Yeah, right there's a fight. Let's see what he does. Yeah. Oh. Okay, quite a bit of hits. He's literally just going to run back. Which is fine with me. If I put you up there... It might just be best to go ahead and... No, I'm going to play it safe, I think. I'm not going to let him... I'm not going to let him take me out. Let's go ahead and put you there. We'll move Elvira back a little bit. And this is a pretty... Oh, I can't put you on Overwatch. I have to reload you. Okay. Well, that is quite the predicament. And you will also have to reload. Okay. Perfect. Did not even consider watching ammo. Just was thinking we had empty clips over here. Shit. Ooh. Right into the shotgun. He's just running. He doesn't even know where to go. If I'm being honest. If I... Well, I have to reload. Oh, damn. Okay. And then we'll take a shot. Now let's move up a little. 78% chance if I move here. Oh, was that his turn actually? That was his turn. That's okay. She'll take him out. Alrighty, and just like that, Elvira took 27 damage. Yeah, kind of saw that coming. We did get, ooh, a new revolver, a .38 revolver. I'll have to check and see if that is better than the one we have right now. Took over the Meatpacker safe house in Chinatown, gained plus three notoriety. Looks good. You have defeated the meat packers. The war is over. That'll teach them. Congratulations. You got your first safe house. Defend it at all costs. Your safe house gives you both defensive and offensive benefits. Like got it. Like everything else, your safe house needs security. It also has a small brewery in case the feds shut down everything else. You can upgrade as you need to, but to win at sin, you're going to need more than that. Alrighty, I got right it. Now you'll need oh. to do the legwork. <laughs> eventually, <laughs> you'll get an underboss to do your bidding while you command things from here. So it looks like that's basically just the basics. Basically just the basics. That's basically just the basics of the game. One last thing. To keep tabs on your empire, open the empire overview screen. Alright, we'll run through that. Right after this, Ronnie O'Neill has died. You've killed Ronnie O'Neill, the boss of the Meat Packers. His entire empire is now yours, which consisted of maybe two shops, right? Like a strip club and a brewery. Or a speakeasy and a brewery. Alright, so the safe house is ours. Let's go ahead and... Can I pause? No, I cannot pause right now. That's fine. Let's go ahead and do the empire this overview. Empire at a glance. Everything you need is here goes pretty deep you can see things like who runs the neighborhood what people are drinking versus what you're serving what others in the neighborhood are up to you can see opportunity too. optimize alcohol get an underboss and an advisor add some synergy bonuses or even a hotel have a look around when you're ready select the racket tab this is what I was saying earlier about how the game on the surface appears simple but when you get underneath it it's very complex i mean just look at all this we have an overview of so we're in chinatown here's our overview 
There's no current owner because it's a little bit contested for now. The prosperity, which is just the general cash in the area. Are there rich people here? Are there poor people here? Mediocre, so eh. Income is plus 1%, max patrons uh, plus zero, and racket cost. Okay. We have the preferred type of alcohol, which right now is top shelf. A lot of this game, if you haven't noticed already, revolves around alcohol. You'll capture breweries, and from the breweries, you'll produce alcohol, which are used to feed your other rackets. I think breweries actually cost upkeep to maintain, while the rackets will earn you money. So it's a delicate balance of having enough alcohol to keep your underground businesses going, and also the right type of alcohol that you're giving them. Right under, we can see our customers. That hasn't updated yet. Earnings have not updated yet. Rackets has updated. We have two out of the total of 30 in the area, or maybe 13. Okay, yeah, so there are 13 others, and derelict slash available is 15. What do we have down here? We have Racket Synergies. We'll get more into that a little bit later when we actually start getting some more rackets. We have our neighborhood security. This shows the average security of your rackets in your neighborhood. Deflect shows the average deflect level of racks in the neighborhood. And I believe deflect is for when police come to investigate. It's how well you can fend off the police. The police. Suspicion also has to do with police. If you're very suspicious, they'll come after you. And status, how dangerous the neighborhood is. Self-explanatory. All those over there. The lieutenant yet signed to the safe house. Okay, here's the breakdown of the neighborhood. Oh, excuse me. Whoa. And here we can see the bonuses that we picked in the beginning of the game. The average casino spend is plus five. Uh, ambiance upgrade, minus five. Our empire bonuses, brothel. We also get an additional casino guy. So she's pretty casino heavy. So hopefully we're going to focus on casinos. Alcohol over here, we have our production, consumption, and our surplus ratio. Again, racket synergies, we'll get to that a little bit later. And basically just a repeat of what is over here. We have the crew in the neighborhood and other factions that are present. Let's go ahead and click over to the Rackets tab. The Racket tab shows every racket you know about, including those owned by others. You can see what level of upgrade they're at and compare your own. Now, select Customer. So like you said, this is just a list of all the rackets in this one neighborhood and then the levels of said rackets. So right now, for instance, we captured the 5 o'clock, the speakeasy, and we upgraded it. One in security and then one in ambiance that so we have rankings right there. It looks like over here some people already have quite a bit going. It's going to be pretty hard to break into all that. Okay, let's go on over to the next customer overview. The customer tab shows how well you do in filling your rackets with customers. You can increase customers by upgrading your word of mouth advertising, locating next to other rackets, or improving your ambience. Next, open the finance screen. Very nice. Let's go ahead and take me there. The finance tab gives you an overview of everything you're making and spending. Last, select alcohol. Yeah, see, it just gets deeper and deeper as you go in. We actually have more tabs on the screen. It's good alcohol. The alcohol tab gives you an overview on what's being made and where. You can see your upgrades here as well and how they can be improved. Yeah, so we just captured Blood Run. And then the safe house does produce just a little bit of alcohol, just in case you need it. Chinatown, we're producing eight alcohol out of the blood rum, and it looks like we're producing swill. I don't know what swill is. It sounds piratey, though. Let's go ahead and move on to the next, the alcohol tab. Hit F8 to head back to your safe house, okay? Looks like you just got a mission. Get a better look at what you need to do by opening the mission screen. Oh, look how lovely we here we have our gun case we have our safe we have our deer head and of course we have ronnie o'neill who is dead on the floor oh no he's just gonna fade away into nothingness all right well that sounds good to me let's check out the mission journal here you can see a list of active missions as well as each mission's requirements and descriptions you can toggle completed missions by selecting the closed tab your active mission will also appear on the main screen. Pretty Close straightforward. The screen. So we're doing sowing the seeds. Your talent, your talents help you to stay ahead of the curve, prepared for whatever the de denizens of the city have to throw at you. The more talent you know, the more effective you'll be in combat. 
Choose a talent from the boss talent tree in your character sheet and see what kind of boss you'll blossom into. So we need to choose a talent from our boss's talent tree. And we'll get some nor norad nor whoa. <laughs> Cash. <laughs> I am fumbling over my words right now. Uh, click to close the mission screen. Let's go ahead and close you. You need to get moving. Get a crew. Get rackets. Fortify them. Make allies and enemies. And take them out. That's how you own this city. Go get them, Kingpin. I'll see you around. So I believe that's pretty much the end. So, oh. what now? Well, that's up <laughs> to you, boss. Soon. You got the tools to take over this city. How you do it is up to you. Take a look at your mission journal to get started. You've got to take this city piece by piece. If you want a suggestion, you can start by taking control of this neighborhood first. Good luck, Kingpin. Sounds good with me, funny glasses. Got it. Okay. So let's pause the game for a sec and just check out what we got. We got ourselves a brand new safe house where we're brewing some, uh, what was it called? Alcohol, I guess. Whatever that alcohol was called. Let's go ahead. First things first. We got our money up here. We are making negative $46 a week. That's not what I like to see. I don't know why our speakeasy is making us lose money, but I guess it is. Uh, all right, we got the date. We have our alcohol. Let's go ahead and do what he said. Let's check out the missions. Sowing the seeds. Just read this. Choose a talent from your boss talent tree. That should be straightforward enough. Weapon proficiencies and gangsters. No, I could skip that. That's pretty straightforward. Just whatever a gangster can use. For instance, if I come over to Bow, Bow over here. The demolitionist, she can use handguns, melee weapons, submachine guns, and machine guns. While she can use handguns, melee weapons, shotguns, and so, so they can actually use the same. And then, let's see. Elvira is the boss. We have a demolitionist, and we have an enforcer. All right, sounds pretty good. Now, what it wants me to do is upgrade, which is right over here. We have Devil's Breath, and now we can pick a tier two ability. From the tier 2 we can get Survivor, regardless of the amount of damage you take, you are now guaranteed to bleed out whenever your health reaches 0. Regardless of the amount of damage you take, you are now guaranteed to bleed out whenever your health reaches 0. Why would I want that? You would think bleeding out is a bad thing, right? Huh. I, I'm. It must be beneficial somehow because it is a perk. It wouldn't make any sense for them to give you a perk that just kills you instantly for no reason. So maybe I'm just reading that wrong. Not too sure. Oh, and I also like how they keep track of your kills and your marksmanship and all that. Lightfooted. You no longer trigger enemy overwatch shots while moving. Ooh, I like that one. That one might be the way to go. And lifeline, any character within four meters of you will bleed out instead of dying whenever their HP reaches zero. So she seems to be more kind of a medic type of person. And I'm, I'm guessing bleeding out is a good thing. Yeah, because I don't know the mechanic that well, I'm just going to go with light footed. It's going to take 56 days to train. I am fine with that. Can we train anybody else over here? We can actually. Bow over here. We can go ahead. She is our demolitionist. So we can either give your break shot, take aim at a target's weapon. A successful hit will break the target's weapon. I like that. Or we can get shrapnel bomb. Throw a shrapnel bomb at a target area. All targets are hit with slow and knockback. Yeah, we're going with the shrapnel bomb. That'll take 36 days. Let's go ahead and get that rolling. Hugh Tank Miller is our last one. He has draw fire, taunt nearby enemies, forcing them to target you. When used, gain 40% damage resistance to all incoming damage. That looks good. And we have suppress fire, suppress an enemy target. Suppress target's chance to hit is reduced by 40%. Huh. Well, I kind of, I would like draw fire, but I don't know how big of a range it has for the taunt. So I'm thinking suppressing fire would be the way to go. Let's do suppressing fire. Let's go with you. All right, it's gonna take 32 days. We have to wait uh, 56, 36, and 32 days. 
looks good. And over here we actually have proficiency, so the more we use something, the better we'll get it. We're already a little bit of the way there with um, handguns. The biography? Whoa. This, this game, man, it's just so much deeper than I would think it is. And I'll just keep it for a second in case anybody wants to read it. Alright, let's see now. Elvira, we're done with that quest. Choose a talent from the boss talent tree. I thought I literally just did that. Did I not? Did I need to hit enter or something? No? I picked it. Maybe it's just saying it, it needs to wait a little bit. Let's check out a different mission. We have brick by brick. Hold five rackets. Yeah, let's go with that one. Let's get our crew together and find the door, which is somewhere around here. I'm not quite sure where. Okay, it's right over here. Let's go ahead okay. on that side. And I have to unpause the game, of course. Oh, there we go. Mission completed. Sowing the seeds. So you need to unpause for that. Makes sense. We got some Norari. And we got some money and some fame. Sounds good. Saving game. All right, so here we are in the streets, ready to start a brand new Let's Play of the whole game. The tutorial is just about done. There's still a few things that might pop up, and I might go through it. I might not. Just depending on if it's a basic concept, I won't. And if it's a complex concept, yeah, I'll probably click through it. And now that we're outside, I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here today. This was the first episode, yes, but it's more like an episode zero. Really just to get done with the tutorial. There will be other tutorial things as we go on, but this is basically where the game opens up and we get to start conquering some more neighborhoods in the area. And I think there are quite a few over here. We already own two, so we'll probably go for a racket in the beginning of the next episode. But as for now, I'd say this is a good stopping point, and I really had a fun time playing this game. Like I said, it's very complex as opposed to what you would think it is, or at least just what I thought it was going to be. And I found it pleasantly surprising, just all these different menus. The I mean, oh, Oba was divided into neighborhoods. Yeah, no, we, we'll go through that probably a different time. And if there's anything that isn't understood, I'll describe it more while I'm talking about it. And other than that, it looks like that's going to be it for today. Well, thank you guys for joining. If you like what you see, go ahead and throw a like. Give me a comment if there's any tips or tricks anybody wants to share. And I'm just very excited to get this thing rolling. So until then, I'll see you next time.